Hi everyone, this lesson is for geometry students. The, this lesson is on heights and area and triangle inequality for CPM geometry. We are in chapter two, uh, day five. So let's get started. Um, we're gonna start a warm up, and a warm up is given a trapezoid's area and height. Um, find, let's see, the length of the median. Now, the median is this mid-length right here in the middle of this uh, trapezoid. And the actual median, uh, the median is equal to um, half the length of both of the bases added up. And so what's interesting is, is that this median or mid-length or mid-segment um, is this being half of base one plus base two, um, half that length, has a similar quality to or very similar to the area because the area of a trapezoid is equal to um, one half base one plus base two times the height. And so realistically, this right here is actually the median times the height. And so what's happening is that value being the median and my question is, how long is the median? I'm gonna plug all my information into this equation and just divide it out to get my height or to get my, the median length. So um, we know that the area is 75 centimeters squared. So I'm gonna put that right here. So 75 equals one half base one plus base two. I'm just gonna call that the median uh, times the height, h. So all I have to do, I know that the height is five centimeters. So I'm gonna replace this height uh, with five. And I'm going to divide both sides by five. So I get the median is equal to 75 divided by five. And just use your calculator or divide. And five goes into seven once. You have two remaining. Five goes into 25 five times. So the median's length is equal to 15 centimeters. Done. All right, so we are starting inequalities, and what is super cool about inequalities is this one thing. Basically, uh, the greater the angle, the greater the side. The smaller the angle, the smaller the side. Okay, and, and the uh, converse of what I just said as well. So we're gonna start off just talking about some properties um, of inequalities. And if we know that AC is greater than AB, and for me, I like to plug in values. I, that makes more sense to me. So I know that AC is greater than AB. So I'm gonna put in a higher value. AB is greater than BC. So I'm gonna put in um, a smaller value here. My conclusion is that AC has what relationship with BC? Well, it's gonna be greater. Um, use the angle addition postulate. Now, this was a, this is actually kind of a cool thing. The angle addition postulate is doing exactly what you're asking. It's adding angles. So, for example, if this is my diagram, given that diagram, where I've got BAD, and then it says BAC is here and CAD is here. This is what it's saying. It's saying uh, the measure of angle BAC, so BAC, plus the measure of angle CAD. So let me try to write a little bit better. You probably don't know this, but I actually broke my wrist. So that's why writing is a little bit tricky for me, but I, I think I'm doing a lot better than I was. So here we go. Um, fell off my bike actually. Okay, so here we go. Let me try this again. The measure of angle uh, BAC plus the measure of angle CAD, CAD, is equal to the measure of the biggest angle, which is the sum of both of those. So you just say BAD. And that's the angle addition postulate. It's very similar to what we talked about in class, which was um, the segment addition postulate, where I had A, here's B, and here's C, and this is called the segment addition postulate, where we had segment AB, and we added segment BC, and we got segment AC, the big, so this little part plus this little part makes the big part. 
and that's what it is. It's just the exact same. This little part of the angle plus this little part of the angle adds up to be the big part of the angle. And that's uh, called the angle addition postulate. Um, so here's some properties of inequalities. Now, inequalities it says if, a, and this is note to self, read the question. This is called the addition property of inequality. So it says A is greater than B, C is greater than D. So what that is actually saying is for the addition property of inequality that A plus C is greater than B plus D. That's what it's saying. Now, the multiplication property of inequality, again, what is it saying? Multiplication property of inequality, if A is greater than B and C is greater than zero, then what's going to happen? It means that I can multiply A times C and same value B times C and still get AC greater than BC. Now, the transitive property, I really like this property. This is like A is greater than B, B is greater than C. So therefore, what do you think? You know, A then, therefore, A has to be greater than C. And then this is just saying the whole is greater than the part. So for example, if I said A is equal to B plus C, and not, for example, you can plug in numbers. So 10 is equal to 6 plus 4, right? Then that would mean that 10 has to be greater than 6. That's a part. The whole is greater than this part. And you would also say 10 is greater than 4. The whole is greater than the part. So if A equals B plus C, then what that means is, is that A is greater than B and uh, A is also greater than C. And lastly, it says substitution can be used also in inequalities. It says, this is what it says, if A is greater than B, great, and A is equal to C, right? So then if A is equal to C, I can replace A with C and say now C is greater than B. So I think um, a lot of the properties of inequalities are a lot of logic, and I think you guys have that. So let's get move forward. Now, this is, I love this. This is given the converse, inverse and contrapositive. State whether each statement is true or false. So you need to know what each of these mean. So a conditional is, ba is like you have a hypothesis and a conclusion. And the reason why it's called a conditional is because basically the second part, which is the conclusion, depends on the conditional or the first part. So if it says, if a figure is a triangle, then the exterior angle sum is 360. By the way, this is what it's saying. Here's a triangle, okay? And what they're saying is, regardless of whatever the measures of, our, of my triangle, the sum every single time of the outside angles, the exterior angles, are always going to add up to be three, uh, 360. So what's going to happen is you guys are going to be like, okay, let's say, let's say this angle is 60, this angle is 50, and this angle is, I don't know, 70? So let's see, 220 plus 60 is 180. So that means because these are lines, right, that this is 120, that's a line here, right? That would be 130, and here's a line, and that, you know, lines have to add up to be 180. And so therefore, if that's 70, this would need to be 110. So they're saying that the exterior angles have to add up to be 360, so let's prove it. We've got 110 plus 120 plus 130. What do we get? Zero, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, 360. Okay, and actually that happens every time you do that, okay? So the question is, is this. If a figure is a triangle, right? then the exterior angle sum is always going to be 360 degrees. So that right there is my conditional, okay? So therefore, this, means, this is my P and this part is my Q. So my P is my hypothesis and my Q is my conclusion. So here's the thing. The converse takes P and Q and flips it like that. And it puts the Q in the front. So here's the question. If, and you gotta rewrite it, right? If uh, the exterior 
angles sum add up to be uh, you had to be 360 then the figure is a triangle now here's doesn't always work like that right because I can think of at least infinite number of shapes that uh, have an exterior angle sum of 360 degrees. So for example, what if I have a square and I know all my squares inside are 90, which means all my outsides are 90 because those are all lines. And what's 90 times four? 360. So the outside angles of a square add up to be 360. That works for a five-sided shape, a six-sided shape, pentagons, hexagons, heptagons. So even though we took our, uh, our hypothesis, our conditional, and we um, flipped it, we made the converse, it doesn't always mean that it's true, okay? So what that means is, and then I'm gonna actually um, delete this for a second because I'm going to put in the, the terminology for a conditional. And so if my conditional says, if P happens, that's this part right here, then Q is going to happen. Well, the converse says, if Q happens, then P will happen. And again, I can even make this written a better way. If Q then P, rewrite that to this value. Uh, if Q, then P. Now that's my converse. Now, while my conditional is actually true, because a figure, if a figure is a triangle, then the exterior angle sum is 360, true. But the converse, if the exterior angle sum is 360, then the figure must be a triangle. That is false, okay? now. Okay, so now what we have is something called the inverse. Now, the inverse is like if this doesn't happen. So you would say if the figure, if the figure, so if P, it, if the figure is not a triangle, so the way you would write if it's not a triangle is like this little enye. So if it's not a triangle, then the sum does not equal to 360 degrees, okay? And then lastly, the contrapositive takes my inverse and it flips it. It says, well, if this doesn't happen, then that's not gonna happen. So you would say, if it, you would say, um, you would say, if it doesn't, if it's, if the exterior angles do not add up to 360, then the figure is not a triangle so what you guys have is all of this information right you've got a true statement you've got your converse that didn't work and then you've got your inverse that didn't work but the contrapositive that basically says if this inverse didn't work and we flipped it around right the conclusion is not true then the uh, then the hypothesis isn't true then that is actually a true statement okay so now we're going to talk about um, a little bit about indirect proofs. Now, something about indirect proofs, which is super fun. Um, indirect proofs is a lot of logic. And it's basically you are uh, trying to prove something. And the way that you prove something is to first prove that it's not happening or it's whatever you're saying is actually false. So you're trying to reason logically for a contradiction or saying something is false. So, so what's happening is the first thing that you see when the very, very first thing that you should be thinking of when somebody says, prove this indirectly or write an indirect proof, the first thing you're gonna say is, well, I'm gonna assume temporarily that the conclusion is false, that it's not true. So if I want to prove that angle one does not equal angle two, the very first step for my proof is going to assume temporarily that angle one 
does equal angle two. So, and then you're going to reason logically how that actually doesn't work, therefore proving that your uh, temporary assumption is not true and therefore proving what you're actually trying to say. So, um, again, point out that the temporary assumption is false and therefore the conclusion is actually what you're trying to prove must be true. And this is by indirect proof. So, um, there's this really cool um, little argument from Shrek that you can listen to um, when you're in class about um, indirect proofs. And I just love this. This is, a, it's good. So, um, again, listen to the following argument and we are going to try to prove this using an indirect proof. So that's your direction. So use um, an indirect proof to prove this is true. So given that cat is five years old, cat is not legally allowed to drive a car in California. That's what we're trying to prove. Okay, so the first thing that you should do is to reason logically. And you're, tr you're gonna actually say that assume temporarily that cat is legally allowed to drive a car in California. That's your first step. Okay, so you would, your very first step, number one, would be assume temporarily that cat who's five years old that cat is okay i don't know if i can move that down that that cat is allowed uh to drive a car okay so you got to assume temporarily that whatever you're trying to prove is not true so you do the opposite okay so take a moment and i mean like i would like you to take a moment and think how can i go about this argument how can i reason logically to go about to prove that this is, you know, by an indirect proof that this is true. Okay, so if you pause the video, I'm gonna start this again. And I mean, this is, oops, this is actually what you would say, or one thing that you would say. And you know, everybody's gonna re reason, you know, logically, differently, etc. So you just have to decide, you know, what makes more sense to you. So assume temporarily that cat is allowed to drive a car. Well, by California state law, in order to be able to drive a car, you must have a California driver's license. Well, in order to obtain a California driver's license, you must be 16 years or older. So this is a contradiction to the given information, that given information that says cat is only five years old. So this is a contradiction because we know that cat's only five. Therefore, our original assumption that she is allowed to drive has to be false. So in conclusion, Kat is not legally allowed to drive a car in California. Proof by indirect, you know, it's an indirect proof. And so that's what, that's what you're trying to solve. Um, okay, so here's another indirect proof. And this is saying you are trying to prove that AB, that line AB is not parallel to line CD. I know it's a little jumbled in there, but that's what you're trying to prove. So obviously the first thing that you are gonna do, and by the way, given information, you are given, uh, you are given information that angle one does not, is not congruent to angle, uh, oops, to angle two. So that's like given information. Okay, see how I've got the little slashes? So we're trying to prove this. So the first thing in an indirect proof is that you got to assume temporarily that what I'm trying to prove is false. So again, and you actually have to write that out. So assume temporarily that AB, line segment AB is, 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 is parallel to line segment CD. Now think about that. If I am trying to say temporarily that AB is parallel to CB, then, I mean, think about it. Wouldn't angle one and angle two be congruent by alternate interior angles if they were parallel? So 
since obviously the given information says that angle one is not equal to angle two, then the lines can't be parallel. So, I mean, you got to come up, I mean, like that may or may not be exactly, you know, exactly how you're saying it, but that's what you're doing. You're assuming temporarily, number one, that AB is, oops, there's my little not sign, or that is equal to CD, okay? By alternate interior angles theorem, angle one is, uh, would equal angle two. However, because they're not equal, the temporary assumption is false, and AB is not parallel to CD. That's an indirect proof. So, moving on. Uh, the length of two sides of a triangle are 8 and 13. So, we are switching subjects. We have a triangle. Any triangle is going to do. We know that the sides of our triangle are eight and 13, and we are trying to figure out what the other side of the angle, what the other angle length can be. This is SAT questions, FYI. You wanna make sure you do know this. Um, the length of two sides of a triangle are eight and 13. Complete the inequality that represents the possible lengths. What you need to realize is that, and you should write this down, is that two sides or the, let me say this the best way I can say it is the sum of two sides of a given triangle are greater than not equal to greater than the third side okay so what that means is two sides ha their sum has to be greater than the third side so that means that on the right hand side we've got 8 plus 13 and on the left, we have 13 minus 8. So 8 plus 13 is what? 21. And 8, 13 minus 8 is 5. So what that means is, is x has to be less than 21. So we'll say this is 20. Or greater than 5. So we'll let's say 6. So let's check. 8 plus 13 is 21, which is greater than 20. 20 plus 13 is greater than 8. 20 plus 8 is greater than 13. Let's try 6. 6 plus 8 is greater than 13. 6 plus 13 is greater than 8. 8 plus 6 is greater than 13. So the way, and that's true. So the way you would do it is you're going to take the two sides, right, and add them up. And you're going to take those two sides and subtract them. And that's like how you do that. Um, is it possible for have triangles the sides of the length? So this is what they're saying. If I have a triangle and I have two, four, and then six, is it possible for this to exist, this triangle to happen? So remember what I said, the sum of two sides. So the sum of two sides of a triangle have to be greater than the third side. That's that's has to be no way around that. So that means two plus six, which is eight, is greater than four. Six plus four is 10, greater than two. But two plus four is equal to six, is not greater than six. So this triangle cannot happen, okay? And what I mean by that is this, even though I drew it like that, this is actually more like what it looks like, something like that. This length is six, this length is four, and this is two, but it's not connected. Now, for this triangle, right, um, I like to draw them out. That's up to you how you do that, two, uh, three, four, and eight. Um, three plus four is seven. Is that greater than eight? No. Therefore, it doesn't work right off the bat. Two sides, the sum of two sides have to be greater than the third side. Okay, so now let's look at this, tri these, this triangle. We have... 2.5, we have 4.1, and we have 5. Well, 5 plus 2 is 7 greater than that. 5 plus 4 is 9 greater than that. 2 plus 4, 6, greater than 5. This exists, okay? Uh, then we have a, this looks like an isosceles triangle. We have 6, 6, and 5. Let's see. 6 plus 6 is 12, greater than 5. 6 plus 5 is 11, greater than 6. Uh, 6 plus 5 is 11, greater than 6. So this triangle also can exist, okay? So we're going to have some more inequality theorems, and these are a few more. Um, we are going to talk about inequalities of two triangles. 
We're going to talk about the three sides, side, side, side inequality theorem and side angle side. So when I'm talking about side, 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 I'm talking about mostly I'm given lengths for a triangle. Okay, that's side, side, side. If I'm talking about side angle side, I have a side, an angle, and a side. So I'm given those three values. So we're going to talk about the theorems that are related to that. Now, the side angle side inequality theorem says if two sides of a triangle is, are congruent to two sides of another triangle, check. We've got this side congruent to that side. We've got this side congruent to that side. Uh, but the included angles are not equal. So that means that we know that the triangles aren't congruent. However, what can you conclude about EF and BC? I want to know the relationship to those two sides. And the two sides, again, that I'm talking about are what's the relationship of these two sides. Given this side is congruent to that side, that side down here is congruent to this side, but my angles inside here are not congruent. However, you do have measurements, okay? So what that means, what we can conclude is that this little, this angle 32 is bigger than 30. Remember the bigger angle is opposite the bigger side. So that means the bigger side is opposite the bigger angle. So that means that EF must be larger than BC because this angle opposite that side is bigger than that angle opposite the other side. Okay, and so that's what you can conclude. EF is bigger than BC. The side angle side inequality theorem says that if I'm given this parallelogram, and remember, we just were finding areas of parallelogram, um, the measure of angle TSR, TSR is bigger, so I'm going to call this 100, than VRS. So this has to be 80, if that's 100. Remember, because those are parallel, parallelogram, and therefore, if it's parallel, then we know that the same side interior angles are supplementary. Anyway, so what are we trying to figure out? We know that. Uh, what are we trying to conclude? Um, something to do with opposite sides, right? And so take a moment, write down what you think is happening, and then restart the video, okay? So um, hopefully you restarted the video, and this is what you recognized, <clears throat> that TR is bigger than VS. Now, if you did not take a moment and try to figure this out, meaning that you didn't split these up and say, well, this is 100, that's T and that's R. And then this triangle here, which was V, S, R, right? And this was, what was this, S? Um, if you didn't take a moment and split that up and say, well, R is 80 here and S is 100, well, the bigger angle, right? The bigger angle has the side opposite uh, the side opposite is larger. So that means TR, TR has to be larger than VS. Now, the only part that possibly you might have some issues with is just why. And the reason why is this. You know that this side equals this side, which means that the RS is congruent to V, uh, what is RS congruent to VT? And you know that ST is congruent to VR. So we know this, okay, so where are we at? Uh, S, we know this is congruent here, and this is congruent here. And the reason for that is side angle side. So therefore, when you say TR, because this is the bigger angle, that side has to be larger. So TR is bigger than R than VS, and the reasoning is side angle side inequality theorem. Um, so this is another side side side. Um, this is side 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 inequality. If two sides are congruent to two th sides, um, I feel like oh, this is the other way around. 
um, but the third sides are not congruent. So if you look at this and you go, this side's congruent, not congruent. This side's congruent to that side. This side is congruent to this side, but these sides aren't congruent. Because if that side, if this was 10, then actually with this side congruent to this side, the base congruent to the base, and the right side congruent to the right side, those, tri those two triangles would actually be congruent by something called side, side, side. However, they're not congruent. So, they're, so what I'm asking you is what do you know based on side, side, side? What do you know? You know, sides are congruent. You know, this side isn't congruent to this. So what do you know? Hopefully you figured out that therefore this angle here, which is angle A, that the measure of that the measure of angle A is greater than the measure of angle F. And the reason would be because 10 is bigger than 8. And so hopefully you came to that conclusion. Okay? I don't know what this was. Hold on. Let me figure out what this little unknown is here. Oh, the longer side. This is just telling you um that the longer third side is across from the larger angle okay that's that's good um then we have the side 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 so now you know that this side here is in both of these triangles like if i were to split these triangles up right this side here would be in both both of the triangles so therefore they would be so therefore they would be equal to each other right so I realistically know this is equal to itself. That's equal to that right there. Um, you also know that uh, AB is greater than AC. Oh, so I'm going to put a 10 here and an 8 here. Well, what does that tell you about angles 1 and 2? Right? What does that tell you? And so what that should tell you is that angle 1 is bigger than angle two. And the reason is because of the side, side, side inequality. So remember, angle one is bigger because it's opposite the bigger side. Angle eight is smaller, or sorry, angle two is smaller because it's opposite the smaller side. Now, your job here is to actually fill in the blank with the appropriate symbol and give a reason what whether it's side, side, side or side, angle, side. So. I right here, please pause the video and work the, try to do these. Figure out what do you know and try to figure out, you know, what you can get from that. Okay, so pause. All right. I'm assuming that you came back. And um, we want we know that this side right here is in both of these triangles. So that's equal to itself. So we've got a side congruent to a side. We have another side congruent to another side. And then we have an angle that's smaller than the other angle. So what can you conclude about FG, which is this side here, and GH, which is this side? Well, hopefully what you came to understand was that the smaller angle is going to be the smaller side. So that means uh, HG has to be, that means HG has to be greater than FG. And the reasoning for that is either, and, and we say either because of side, 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 but it's more of side, angle, side, because we have a side, angle, side. Now, the next question says, fill in the blanks with the appropriate symbol and give the reason. So we know that this is 10, 10, 10. Well, what do you know about 10, 10, 10? That looks like equilateral triangle. And if that's an equilateral triangle, realistically wouldn't all of the angles be exactly the same and if that's the case then if they want to know tell me about angle c or segment c versus segment 10 i would know that segment c which is opposite the angle that's 58 degrees would be smaller than the angle opposite the 10 because 60 is bigger than 58. And so your reasoning is side, angle, side. Um, this is the one that I would say side, 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 because they've got three sides. Anyway, either one on that, that side, angle, side. And lastly, 
Um, we have angle one and angle two. So we're trying to compare these two angles here. And you know this side is congruent to itself. So I've got three sides here and three sides here. So this one is three sides, it's side, side, side. But um, six is bigger than five. So that means angle one is greater than angle two. And reasoning, side, 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 inequality theorem. All right, right on. Um, this one right here, another one of those where I'd like you to try to work this out and then figure out you know, what's what. So if you would pause the video, that would be super helpful for you. And then come back. So we are trying to find the relationship between one and two. This is two and this is one. Now one is across from six and two is across from three. So that's, so which is the bigger side, six. So that means angle one is bigger than angle three. They're larger. So angle one has to be larger than angle two. Um, for this problem, uh, AD, AD, AD. Here's AD and here's CE. So, oh, I can't even see that. That's so small. That one, oh, this is 36. So this is a bigger angle than that. So that means EC, EC or CE has to be bigger than AD because the bigger angle is opposite the bigger side. And lastly, we are trying to find, again, I need my glasses. Oh, this is five. So five is opposite side eight and six is opposite side nine. And nine is bigger than eight. So that means that six has to be greater than five. And so just checking your work here, right? You just have to make sure you have the reason for that and the reason like for why is it, you know, bigger or less and whatever. And here I gave you three sides, side, side, side here. Um, on this one, I gave you side, side, side here. So that should be pretty obvious, you know, that the reasoning is side, 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 side. This one is side angle and then side here. These, the reason why um, this one is side angle side, oops, is, just so you know, see these two angles here? Those are congruent, right? So if the angles are congruent, that makes it an isosceles triangle, which means the sides are congruent. And therefore, we've got side, angle, side. And that's why that's side, angle, side. So that's it. Um, I hope that helped you clarify a few things about side, 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 about converses, contrapositives, and um, inverses. Also, we talked about, um, you know, uh, what else do we talk about? Um, indirect proof. So we had a lot of information on our plate today. Um, thanks for watching and uh, make sure you come into uh, office hours if you ever need help. Thanks.